Now I've been sober for almost 10 years. I haven't lived adult life with drinking and doing drugs. So I've been sober my entire adult life. There's wiggle on my finger on this. It's birthday. I didn't know that. Andy, this is our Andy Five. So you have your role model right here. <laughs> I'm what they call an alcoholic and a drug addict. I wish that I could just have one drink or smoke a joint every now and then, but I can't do that simply because I'm wired differently. Think about it as if my substance using license has expired. Now I'm not bashing drinking and drug use, that's just my personal relationship with it. When it's just kind of become this coming of age thing to Dude, me. yeah, it's, it's like touching your skin. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> John is these things, take on the bottom of your shoes. <laughs> Say I won't, dude. I swear I will. I actually hope you do. Oh my god. It's a look at her. Three, two, one! Good Holy god! Oh, damn! <laughs> that was that hurt. <laughs> damn. Soaked. <laughs> Dogs are having a heyday with father and son. Yeah, fuck that shit. Dude. I already know you're zooming in. That's your thing. Hell is zooming in. <laughs> <laughs> I wish that I could just have one drink or smoke one joint, but I simply just can't. And I can't even wrap my mind around why the hell you would want to just smoke one joint or drink one drink. I don't understand that because I'm not gonna get fucked up off of that, so why would I do it? I don't even like the taste of alcohol. Sure, I could probably take one drink or just smoke a joint every now and then. That's also gonna come along with all of the baggage that comes with being addicted to something or addicted to any kind of substance. I wanna be removed as far away from reality as possible. Maybe now you're starting to understand what I mean. Now the reason I'm telling you all of this and making this video isn't to give you a rundown of the entire history of my substance abuse. I got sober at 19 and I became an adult in sobriety. And like most 19 year olds, I thought that I had everything figured out when in reality, I didn't know shit. I'm not really sure what my early 20s would have been like if I would have kept drinking and abusing substances, but I do know that it probably wouldn't have ended well. I definitely wouldn't have been able to accomplish all the things that I accomplished, like moving all the way across the country at 22 years old, managing a skate shop, probably even starting this YouTube channel. I don't think I would have been able to do any of that because I was so concerned about where the party was and getting fucked up and I just had this huge sense of FOMO around just missing out on the party. My mind was so consumed and so obsessed with just needing to be a part of that. Not once did I stop and think about where it was all going or where it could all lead until eventually I burnt so many bridges and just destroyed so many relationships that I had that kind of left me with this empty, desperate feeling. I did not know how to have healthy boundaries. I didn't know how to have healthy relationships. I was just a dramatic, codependent mess, always needing and seeking the approval of someone else so that I could feel good about me. I didn't know how to think about anyone else besides myself. Every single thing that I did had a secret agenda that you didn't know about. Manipulating people and conversations into ways that would only, only benefit me without thinking about the other person at all. That just led me to feeling like I wanted to die. I mean like actually wanting to die because you hate yourself so much for the things that you've done in your life. And I could just hit the switch and all of this would be over and I wouldn't have to feel this way anymore. But I was also growing up and becoming an adult. I had to learn how to pay rent. I had to like work several jobs and I had to like figure out all this life stuff, pay your taxes and all that shit. So it was hard enough growing up, let alone growing up with a substance abuse problem. With that being said, I made a lot of mistakes, just as everyone else. Everyone else makes mistakes in life. Everyone has their own adversities. I didn't want to admit that I was wrong or that I hurt somebody or that I did this for with like a selfish agenda. I wanted to believe that, you know, the world was against me and I was right and this was happening to me and that was happening to me. But in reality, I was causing all of this pain in my life. Immediately after getting sober, there was kind of this awakening 
where I was able to self-reflect. I became aware of my actions. I became aware of the responsibility that I had over myself and over the actions that I had taken to damage bridges, damage relationships, and uh, just about everything else in my life. So this gave me an advantage. That's the other fan base, bitch. <laughs> trying to teach you on a skateboard right now, and you're just wanting to climb in my lap. So from doing all this self-reflecting stuff, I became willing to work on my flaws and the things that were causing me the most pain in my life, which were the reasons why I abused substances in the first place. I was willing to admit where I fucked up and where I went wrong. And once you admit where you've gone wrong or that you fucked up, then you can correct them. You can set the foot in motion towards like changing yourself for the better. Making mistakes isn't the problem. Owning and correcting them, taking responsibility for your actions was my issue. With being able to look at my actions and self-reflect, I was able to just change the course of all of them. expect to learn from my mistakes if I wasn't willing to take responsibility for them. Being in that uncomfortable space is where the most growth happens. It really sucks, but it's the best thing that could have happened to me in that time. Realizing how do I not feel like this again by taking different action. Doing the exact opposite of what I had previously done. Now I'm not saying that I'm perfect by any means, but I've definitely made progress. To a lot of people this may seem like a really obvious thing, but to me it wasn't. I learned a lot of tools and coping mechanisms that helped me become a better version of myself. And this alone is like the thing that I am most grateful for because a lot of people don't get the opportunity to do that. A lot of people don't get that chance to work on themselves and to be able to see that there is a way out of this like self-absorbed selfishness that consumes you and then ultimately destroys your life. It's also just taught me to be more grateful for little things, little everyday things that we just kind of don't really think about because they become part of our routine. Like paying rent. Paying rent is literally something that I am reminded every single month that I am grateful for because there was a time when I couldn't do that. saying that any of this was easy by any means because this was probably the hardest thing I've ever done and I only was able to do this kicking and screaming the whole way through. But doing that repeatedly over and over again for years has taught me discipline. It actually does take a lot of work to reprogram habits, behaviors, and self-talk. In order for it to work successfully, it has to be an everyday thing. It has to become a part of your routine. And I know that that might sound exhausting, and it actually is and was, but only in the beginning. Once you build the habit, it just becomes that much more easier. You build a sense of self-confidence for the fact that you were able to achieve something. I strive to change in hopes that the changes that I make will affect not only myself better, but the people around me better, so that like everyone is ultimately having a better experience. It's a big reason why I'm so hypercritical and analytical of myself. I just don't want to make people feel bad. 
Really what I hope to accomplish by making this video is that it even just helps one person who might be unsure about sobriety or unsure about whatever they're struggling with and they just might not know what to do. Maybe you're afraid to just take that next step that you know is ultimately better for you, but you're afraid to take that because you know it's gonna come with some sacrifices. And it will, there's always a price to pay for everything. And look, I'd really hate for this video to come off as some kind of self-worshipping, look at what I've done in my life type of thing. Because if I've learned anything, it's that the world does not care at all about your accomplishments. Like sure, they might have empathy or sympathy, but they're also fighting their own personal battles and they're trying to like win at their own game. Even if you've been sober for an extended period of time or you've recovered from whatever it is you're struggling with, the world isn't gonna stop spinning. You're still gonna fuck up, you're still gonna be an asshole. I hate this feeling. People are still gonna die, you're still gonna end up in shitty situations. Life is still gonna constantly happen. It's how you respond to that and how you deal with that and handle those situations is how the outcome of your life tends to manifest. Even if you've done the work to change who you are and become a better version of yourself, you're still gonna fuck up and you're still gonna be an asshole. But that's okay. That's literally just being a human. As long as you learn from those situations and own up to your mistakes, that's all that matters. And that's all you can really ask of someone. And if you're lucky, you'll find a community or group of people, whether it be friends or a support group, that share the same common interest and same common goal. That's a really good situation to be in because you're all kind of striving for the same thing and you're just helping, helping boost each other up. So if the world doesn't care about your struggles or the things that you've accomplished, why even bother making this video? Because the one thing that you get out of any type of adversity at all is a story. And that story might help someone. Someone else might be able to relate to that. And if I can even just help one person, or if one person can even relate to this, then mission accomplished. That equals 420! <laughs> <laughs> what was that? <laughs>